Hello everyone, uh, I'm Ying Zhang and today I'll be talking about a system that may raise some trademark issue for, for me called LEGO OS. So a few years ago, uh, I started to look into an idea called hardware resource disaggregation. And the, the idea is quite simple. So in the data center, instead of having servers and having a motherboard that hosts a bunch of devices, how about we just separate these devices into independent network attached devices? So this is called hardware resource disaggregation now. Well, the natural question is why should we do something like this? So if you look at applications that are running in data centers, they are essentially already distributed and functionally disaggregated. So workloads like data analytics, machine learning, they essentially are running in a distributed way. But more than that, Functions are in, in these um, applications are also becoming more and more fine-grained with trends like serverless computing and microservices. So the current practice is to run a distributed system on top of a monolithic Linux server, and then to group these different server, server functions into different function pools. But the problem is there's an overhead of having a distributed system uh, interaction layer. And also, there's only so much you can do to customize a monolithic server and monolithic Linux. So what about the layers below distributed systems? So these are OS and hardware. So these layers, unfortunately, for decades, they have been built with the assumption that every ap application is essentially local. But if you look at applications in data centers now, they are all distributed. So are we actually having a wrong assumption for these lower level systems? So what we believe we should do is to have a clean slate design for these low level systems. What I mean by that is to have built in support for distributed resource management, for fine grain failure handling, for a fast network, for function separation customization. And with this, I believe we can reach another level of performance, manageability, and customization. So that's on the application side. What about hardware? So if you look at data centers these days, they are actually becoming more and more heterogeneous and domain spe specific with things like GPU, TPU, FPG, and NVM. So now this is good, good news for data centers. They all want to use all these fancy hardware, but the first thing they need to do now is to find server slots to put these devices in. And if they don't have, they need to buy new servers and retire old servers. This is a costly process and because of that, it's hard, hard to incorporate many of the new hardware ideas. But imagine if you just can directly connect devices to network and to deploy a new hardware, you just add a new device to the network and to retire old one, just take them off the network. So this will largely improve the heterogeneity and elasticity of hardware in data centers. So now we just looked at application and hardware. So what about some of the real problems data centers are facing? One of it is uh, resource packing. So essentially data centers, when they want to allocate resource, now they are facing a multi-level, multi-dimensional bin packing problem. Let's look at a very simple example. Let's say we have two machines, and this is the occupied resource on machine one and machine two. And we have this uh, waiting job, which needs uh, three yellow, two red, and uh, two blue and one red, and together machine one and machine two have enough resource, but because this job has to run on a single machine, we cannot run this job. And the related problem is that usually because you, you cannot easily move a job around after it starts to run, you have to allocate, pre-reserve more resource than what is actually used. And because of this, we are seeing in major data centers like Google and Alibaba, the CPU and memory utilization is only 20% to 60%. So there's some current solution to this, which is like uh, you can split application into fine-grained smaller pieces with things like microservice, and then run them separately on different machines and communicate through things like RDMA, remote swap, and distributed shared memory. But there's still a performance overhead to this, and also there's no good support for, for, for fine-grained um, failure. But imagine if every device is just separate and disaggregated on its own, and when we want to allocate resource, we can allocate from any of these devices. And when you want more, you, when you're seeing a high demand, you can just allocate more. And when you're seeing the demand starts to reduce, you just turn off some of the device. And if the demands keep increasing, you can add more devices. 
So with this, we can re easily reach auto scaling, uh, right sizing, and um, tight resource packing. And together, this would improve the monetary and energy cost of data centers. So with all these trends uh, and limitations, what I think we should do is to move data centers to a new paradigm, what I call disaggregated data centers. So essentially, we should look at the problem from the perspective that we should admit that the operations are all distributed and functions are essentially separated. So what we are proposing is to do this uh, disaggregated data center from the hardware all the way to the, to the application. So from hardware, we should just distribute and disaggregate hardware devices. And then the core OS part, we also distribute and functionally disaggregate them. And then after disaggregating, we run each of these uh, separate OS smaller pieces on the hardware. And for application, they're already distributed and disaggregated. Now they can just run down these um, disaggregated hardware and OS easily. So with this, we have uh, started a, a multi-year effort into building what we call LEGO DC, another tra trademark issue, I guess. Um, so this is an end-to-end -end solution for disaggregated data centers. So we are dealing with uh, the problem from all the way from hardware to network to OS to distributed uh, system and a little bit into application programming language. But today, uh, let's just look at the OS layer, which is called LEGO OS, uh, and it was originally presented in last year's OSDI. So the first question when we had is, once we disaggregate hardware, what type of OS should we build? Can existing OS work? Unfortunately, existing OSs, they were not designed for disaggregated resources, and they cannot handle a lot of issues well. For example, now, a lot of the resources, they are now moving across network, and traditional OSs, they do not handle these remote resources well. And not only are they remote, but they are also distributed. And there's no um, support for this low-level distributed resource. And also existing OSs, they do not ha handle fine-grained failure well. So what type of OS should we build? Our idea is quite simple. So when hardware is disaggregated, the OS should also be. So this is traditional OS, which has process management, virtual memory system, file system, and network stack. So what we do and hold file and storage system to storage. And by moving function close and local to the device, we believe we can achieve faster and better management, and we can also customize these different pieces better. With this, we propose the architecture called split kernel. So with split kernel, uh, we split OS functions into what I call monitors. And for example, we have process monitor running on CPU, GPU monitor running on GPU, memory monitor running on memory. And one of you may uh, invent a new hardware and you can just build your own customized monitor and then plug that into the network. And here we're assuming a general purpose network that only does messaging. What that means is we leave um, into a component coherence to application, which solve a lot of our performance issues. And also, the split kernel would handle uh, failure and resource management. So with this split kernel idea, we build LEGO OS. It's a new distributed OS for disaggregated hardware. So the first question we ask is, how should LEGO OS appear to users? So we have two, two very extreme design choices. On one end, the whole thing can appear as a giant machine, and we can hide all the, all the details of disaggregated nature. And on the other end, we can expose the disaggregated nature to, to users and let it appear as a set of hardware devices. We choose something in the middle, which we call vNodes. So this is uh, closer to a container, but not exactly a container. So this is closer to what application developers are already familiar with. And also, we um, support more, uh, all common Linux ABIs. So this is what, uh, how vNode works. So vNode is a protection domain, and, but one vNode it can run on multiple devices, and one device can run multiple vNodes. And also we allocate, with vNode, we allocate resource on demand. So internally, LEGO OS has many uh, detailed design, and I won't be able to cover all of them. So today I will just be uh, 
focusing on the first, which is how we separate OS and hardware functionalities, and briefly touch upon how we manage resources. So the most difficult part we faced when we were building Lego OS is to separate processor and memory. So these two have been fundamentally built together for decades. So how do we separate these? So the first step is just to separate and move DRAM across the network. But that's not enough. We also move all the hardware units that are used to manage memory also across the network. After that, we move the software system that used to manage memory, which is virtual memory system, also to the memory and run it in a, pro, uh, in a controller at the memory device. So after this, what we are seeing is we, are separate, we, se we can separate the whole virtual memory system into the memory side. And that leaves us what, we call, what I call P component for process and M component for memory. And for the P component, now we, are, we only deal with virtual address because all the virtual memory space, physical memory space, and the translation are handled at M components. So what that means is we change all levels of CPU caches into virtual caches, which are virtually tagged and virtually indexed. So this functionally, this whole thing, now we have clean separation of functionality. But what about performance? So if you look at this uh, diagram, you will see that every last level cache miss would involve a one network round trip. So what about network delay? So let's look at how network speed has improved over the uh, past couple of decades. So this figure, um, y-axis is bandwidth, so higher is better. So this blue line is a single, single lane ethernet, and this is called lane, so four times speed. And this one is a single bank, DDR memory speed, and uh, this is DDR bus. So if you, we are just looking at comparing single lane ethernet with single bank uh, memory, DDR memory, you can see that throughput is actually close and some projection is uh, network would even be faster. But at the same time, if you look at latency, uh, network is still 10 times, around 10 times worse. And the interesting, another interesting part is ma many of the local DRAM, they are actually facing both capacity and bandwidth wall. So what I think we should do is to rethink the whole memory hierarchy and memory, me memory system. So what we propose is to separate performance and capacity of memory. So for performance, we handle all that at P components. And what we do is we add another level of what we call extended cache, or ES cache, below last level cache. And we use a small a few GBs of high bandwidth memory for that. And this EX cache is managed um, by the hardware on the hit path, and OS manages the miss path. So this, with this, we can actually improve the performance on the P component side. And now we move all the capacity side across the network. What, what we do is we can increase the size of each M component's DRAM, or even use non volatile memory, and we can have multiple of them. So with this architecture, we improve both performance and capacity and we can separate and manage them independently. So now I'll just very briefly talk about our dis uh, distributed resource management. So our idea is to use a two-level uh, management. So at a lower level, we do fine-grained management where each component, they just communicate on their own with for fine-grained resource um, allocation and fi fine-grained access. And then we, have, we maintain one or multiple global resource manager that, ha, that does process ma global process management, global memory management, and global storage management. And every time when you have a cost-grained uh, resource request, like when you want to allocate a new process, you go to uh, the global process management. But when you create a new thread, it will be local. So I don't have time, unfortunately, I don't have time to go into a lot of the design details of uh, LEGO OS. So if you're interested, you should check our paper out. So now let's uh, move to implementation and evaluation. So we implemented LEGO OS from scratch. I think uh, it's uh, more than 200,000 lines of code now. And we ported a lot of drivers from Linux. And uh, so at the time, we were just using normal servers to emulate disaggregate devices. And currently, we are building our own hardware solution. So uh, here we show um, results with unmodified TensorFlow that are running ImageNet and Cypher 10. And we compare LEGO OS with several systems. So the first uh, and the baseline um, is single machine Linux with essentially unlimited memory. 
So no swap and all, all memory is enough, all the local memory is enough. So this would give us optimal performance. We also compare Linux swap to local uh, RAM disk, so in-memory disk, and also a system called InfiniSwap that uh, swaps to remote memory through InfiniBand. So this figure shows the uh, Cypher 10 result, and uh, ImageNet is similar. So Y-axis uh, here, we are showing performance per dollar. So our per dollar is uh, calculated by hardware energy cost, and it's roughly, with Lego OS, we can roughly save half of the cost. So here, and x-axis is the um, memory size, local memory size, or ex cache size. So if you look at just pure LEGO OS, how it compares to single machine Linux, we can see that LEGO OS can improve performance per dollar by up to 1.5, 1.4 times. And then this is InfiniSwap, swapping to remote memory and swapping to local RAM disk. So if we are only comparing perf pure performance, LEGO OS improves performance of the swap systems by 1.3x to 2.1x. So this actually is the power of um, building something from ground up and solving things uh, from OS and hardware level. So to sum summarize LEGO OS, firstly it's open source. And uh, I think uh, just looking back, I think the key contribution is in demonstrating the feasibility of separating something that is very fundamental and core to OS. That is uh, things like how do we separate process from memory. And after separation, there are a lot of new opportunities we can do. We can customize application hardware. And I think this could encourage a lot of the future and hardware OS research. And like Ramsey said, uh, conclusion is always different from summary. So to conclude, to conclu conclude this, this is most, probably the most controversial sentence of the whole slide deck. That what at least what I think is data center desegregation is not an if question, but it's a how question. So what we believe the approach to uh, do the data center desegregation is an end-to-end -end solution that um, do things from ground up. And we, we are pushing function disaggregation and distribution into all layers of the system stack. And another interesting thing that we uh, found is that, uh, especially to students here, uh, that building kernel is fun, uh, although you write a lot of code, but it's still fun. And nowadays we are seeing new ways to build OS. So maybe OS can, part of the OS is in user space. It's disaggregated, distributed, or maybe you can build OS in hardware. And uh, with that, I want to thank all my students who work on LEGO DC, and um, happy to take, take questions. Hi. We, sp uh, we spent a lot of time trying to put components close together in order to decrease latency. I was just wondering, this seems to fly in the face of that, in that it introduces the latency, which doesn't seem to be compressible beyond a certain point due to physics. So I was just wondering what the effects of latency might do to systems that are running in a data center like this. So, so this is a very good question. So there are a um, few angles I will probably uh, answer this. So the first is um, LEGO OS and this separation does not solve problems of uh, all problems. So I would say this is better for throughput oriented, um, ori ori oriented applications. Um, but also if you see the memory, uh, the EX cache that we added. So we think latency should be handled separately from throughput. And for throughput network is in enough, uh, at least for the things that we see. And for that we can actually push a lot of the throughput oriented and a lot of the data across network. And for latency sensitive, we should just focus on optimizing the processor side with the cache. Yeah, so that's uh, my take on that. Hi. Um, I'm curious, since you have more different distinct components now, don't you increase the probability of failure? Like if one of those components fail, and, and as well as security exposures? So that, that's a very good question. So it um, uh, depends on how you define failure. So the, the, uh, I think it's true that we may add more components. But just to remember, because our resource utilization is better, so the total resource that you will need uh, essentially decreased. But each resource, you are now adding more components. So I would say this is roughly similar. But uh, in terms of what you, when, you, when something fails, crash, what it fails, now it's more fine-grained. 
Currently, when the processor fails, the whole machine fails. And our model, when the processor fails, it only fails that processor. The whole application still exists. So it depends on it's a different way how you handle failure. But, but don't you have more network connections and more like independent power supplies potentially? So it, it seems like you have more of a chance for very small uncorrelated failure that would make your applications harder to write because now they have to deal with partial failures. They don't get to like crash or like go away when the whole machine crashes. Now you have more chances of these more probable partial failures happening. Uh, so, um, well, li like first, like I said, the whole resource that you need is less because utilization is higher. So the independent component, um, the amount of independent component may not increase. And the second is, uh, it depends on how you build applications and who would handle this failure. So our approach is our level. We will ha handle all these fine-grained um, failure with Lego OS and hide that, those from applications. And to the application's point of view, they're just running on a set of Linux containers. Oh, so you do, do like replication? Is yes. That the, uh, yeah. Uh, does your system expose like network locality of resources to the user? Like, uh, is it there any notion of you know locality. I, I want to make sure that I have RAM that's in my rack versus the rack next to me versus like a totally different data center? Um, currently, no. And currently, our scale is uh, like a one or two racks. But I would say we are working on uh, we are working on larger scale and thinking about some of the locality hierarchy problems. Uh, thank you for the great uh, presentation. Uh, it's very impressive. So first question is that uh, I feel the overall system availability or reliability is highly dependent on the availability of the global monitoring system. If there is any issue about the global monitoring system, that will impact a lot. Yeah, so like I said, the global monitor system, first is we, uh, we can also replicate the global monitor, global resource manager, it's not a global monitor. And the other thing is uh, we actually, uh, so the global management get, gets all, can reconstruct all its information from contacting the individual uh, resources, individual de devices. So they keep fine-grained knowledge of uh, uh, resource utilization and other things. So the global thing can be reconstructed. And that when it fails, you can just go to the fine grade, which is a little bit slower. I'm also thinking about another question, maybe very interesting. So think about I'm a developer. I want to improve this kind of system. And I find out there's a bug in my global resource management. And uh, the impact of this bug could be, see, when one memory slot or all memory slot. I think the potential impact of a small bug in, a, in any component will be, could be very huge. How do you think about that? Well, so this first one I would uh, also answer the other security one. So the, what we do is we separate, uh, lean, you can think of a Linux OS into smaller pieces and each piece it's mostly independent. You can protect it on its own. You can develop and debug it on its own. So from this point of view, um, it's easier to, to, uh, to protect, to, to make it more, more reliable. Um, and also the global um, thing, that I think any, any system that uh, uses a global management would have, this, would have similar issue. And we, we actually reduce the amount of uh, our <coughs> dependency on, on this global management. Thank you. Sorry, let's just take one more question and you can defer. So my question is more about uh, performance prediction. How is the uh, dividing this operating system into a lot of pieces talking to each other through network, making the system, uh, is it more, is it becomes more unpredictable because now the components speak with uh, other components through network which could be subject to noise? That, that's a good question. So first is I want to say that uh, this is a big move, and we are also building our own network solution, uh, which and, and there are other network solution to resource disaggregation. But uh, in terms of, um, sorry, what's your original question? Uh, <laughs> predictability of the application, given that the network is noisy. Uh, they predict it. 
I would say that, uh, like I said in the beginning of the talk, a lot of the applications, they are already distributed and disaggregated. So I would say that if you can manage this disaggregated nature in a, in a lower system like OS, you can manage this unpredictably, unpredictability better than if uh, in the current way that everything is just whole disaggregated from the application point of view. Okay, uh, that's thanks to the speaker.